what's the largest man-made structure on the planet. And it represents about a, 100 billion tons of carbon dioxide that all the organisms took out of the ocean to form the calcium carbonate structure. In fact, most of the carbon on the planet is in the form of calcium carbonate in the crust of the Earth. Only a very small amount is in the atmosphere. So looking at it from a natural point of view, looking at the way coral reefs form, uh, it, it only makes sense to take CO2 to form structures. And our initial goal was to go out and form a replacement for Portland cement, which is the third largest source of anthropogenic CO2. And already having medical cements in every operating room in the world did that is orthopedic surgery that I invented in, earlier in my career. And having uh, over 70 patents on cement, it, it was a, a very clear path for me to formulate a, a cement to replace Portland cement that uh, could be used to eliminate all the CO2 footprint from Portland cement. And concrete is the most traded material other than water in the world, so it's a very big, important market. Uh, and in pursuing that, we were actually in the lab in Venota was there. And we noticed by, by adding CO2 to the seawater from which we were making the cement, very akin to corals, we could increase our yield dramatically. And I leaned to the node and I said, where can we get some CO2? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, we were a carbon capture company. And uh, so we're, we're, we're eliminating the problem of cement and the problem of CO2 coming from uh, the combustion of fossil fuels for electrical power generation together at the same time. And uh, what's important with regard to the Chindia test is this is something we can do profitably. So if we can go into any venue and make the sequestration of the CO2 a profitable exercise. And I, I want to you know, emphasize how great it was having Tony down at our plant yesterday uh, down on Monterey Bay. He literally rolled up his sleeve and stuck his hand right into a, a big bat of cement. And I, I noticed I still have uh, cement on my cuticles. <laughs> the, uh, but we have a, a large plant down in Monterey Bay where we're doing this today. What's important, though, is not just that we, we have dozens of sites around the world today where we can go with the technology that we had developed last year and implement this today. And there's already a natural infrastructure in place moving a material called fly ash from coal-fired power plants to what are called ready-mix plants, which is where concrete is distributed uh, every day, around the clock as we speak. They pick it up FOB at coal plants and take it to the ready-mix plants. And all the concrete, for example, here in California, requires about 20% fly ash in it. So this is done everywhere around the world. So every aspect of the infrastructure to implement this is already in place. There's no need for new pipelines or anything new like this. So it's the most rapidly deployable, probably most penetrable part of CO2 sequestration. I guess one last piece about what we're doing now is there are about 32 billion tons of aggregate mined every year, of rock mined every year for asphalt and concrete, and another 4 billion tons of limestone mined in all in open pit mines to make Portland cement. That's 36 billion tons of mining. In comparison, worldwide, there's about 5 billion tons of coal mine. So it's seven times as much as all the coal mining. You know, people say, well, coal mining takes off the top of mountains and all that. Actually, most coal mining is done below ground. 100% of rock mining does take off the tops of mountains. By making the, this aggregate, this rock locally at the power plant, making the cement locally at the power plant, not only do you not have to mine and transport all this, this uh, rock, but it's used locally. So it has a tremendous environmental impact even beyond uh, the effect that it has on CO2. Thanks, Frank. You know, what's amazing is for every ton of coal mined, it eliminates six or seven tons of mining of limestone, pouring of limestone, which is amazing. Not only that, Brett forgot to mention that not only does it capture the carbon dioxide, but the sulfur dioxide that causes acid rain, the mercury from coal plants, the cadmium, chromium, other emissions of heavy metals are all captured and permanently encased in these cement structures. So that makes it a very interesting technology. Just one word of caution. 
Today we can do it for many plants, enough to meet our business plan for many years, but we can't. We don't consider it a solution yet to the carbon dioxide problem because we can't, because the feedstocks we need do it at every plant in the world. So we still need CCS and other technologies to complement this technology. We are expanding our technology set where we hopefully go from many plants today to most plants within a decade or so. That is the goal of the company, but not all that invention has been